Greetings, folks. Eric here. Um, today, I've got a prophetic word to deliver. Uh, I was instructed by the Lord to broadcast. Um, I want you to help me put this out to as many avenues and outlets as you can. A lot of uh, old-time religion folks are being hoodwinked by the mainstream media and even Fox News. Uh, who a lot of them still think, oh, that's a Republican channel, that's a conservative channel, but they don't realize that what it actually is is something called controlled opposition. They say just enough uh, to make hardworking, um, good-hearted people who consider themselves Democrats to make them upset without actually saying anything that's going to get the true people who are up to no good in trouble. So, um, let's start with a prayer. Lord, This let this be all you and none of me. Um, give me the words through the Holy Spirit to speak your truth, to speak the message that you want the people to have, even if it veers off exactly what you gave me earlier, that's okay as long as it's the Holy Spirit that's guiding it. I surrender to your complete will. Um, in Jesus' name, amen. Okay. So here's what happened a little earlier today. I was in the bathtub taking a bath and, you know, I'm able to use my phone while I'm in the bath. And a lot of times that's how I sort of meditate or decompress from the day and also at the same time get some things done or change my mind, change my focus by researching something. Anyway, I happened to be follow, uh, catching up with my Facebook I'm not on Facebook too much these days, but uh, I was catching up to see if there was anything I needed to reply to, and I came across a pastor friend's uh, feed, and he had posted something about, it was just a text with the color behind it, and it had said, uh, it said, this song, uh, back in the days, this was so spiritual just singing it would make the Holy Spirit start to move. And um, the song that he posted a few lyrics is a, of is What a Friend We Have in Jesus. And if, for those of you who haven't heard this one, What a Friend We Have in Jesus is like this. Oh, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and something fair because what a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer and it goes on but that's the basic gist of the course and so he had posted about that much of it. And I thought, yeah, that's a great song. That's a great song. And the Holy Spirit started to move in me, even though I wasn't singing it, except in my mind. And I was reading uh, the commenters, and there were only like two or three comments at the time. And then somebody else who looked like a well-dressed pastor, but could have just been a well-dressed black man, uh, by his profile photo from 1980 or 1970-something, you know, suit and tie, whatever. He commented, yeah, but all the churches are just out for your money these days. And I thought that was interesting. And all of a sudden, I saw my pastor friend, he replied, yeah, it's a shame or something like that. And I said, I started to reply. And it was me when I started to reply. And here's what I replied. I said, but the Lord is tired of those wolves dressed as sheep or dressed as shepherds 
leading his people astray. Even now he is raising up a remnant, as in Gideon's day, separating the wheat from the chaff, cutting off the unproductive fruit and winnowing down to the final metaphorical 300. And then all of a sudden the Lord started to speak. Thus says the Lord, I am seeking leaders who will preach my word as I wrote it. Teach what my son Jesus taught. Allow my Holy Spirit to move and operate in true signs and wonders. Are you prepared? Are you prepared for deliverance ministry anointings in abundance? Are you prepared for those who speak and heal through only the word? Are you prepared for standing for me and my message and my absolute goodness among those who will not stand in the face of attacks from government and attacks by religious spirits? For these spirits dwell on the earth and cause more havoc in the church, in my body, than the government ever could. Are you prepared to stand? Satan's original lie as the father of lies was simply, did God really say that? No, that's not what he said. But you asked me to lead you away from temptation, so I gave you my Holy Spirit. He will guide you in everything, and you have the mind of Christ, and you know all things if you are prepared to believe the answer I show you. The good of the people, and he showed me in my spirit that what he was kind of saying there was, and a lot of you aren't going to want to hear this, a lot of you are going to be like, Oh, no, 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 no. He doesn't know what he's talking about. That must be some Ill other spirit he's talking through. If that's what you feel, I, I can't change that. I'm not, I'm not trying to change anybody's mind. But what I am trying to do is let you know what God said so that your blood is not on my hands if you fail to heed his warning. So what he's talking about there is uh, and that was me. That was me explaining myself. Um, this is like a sidebar. God is talking about the lie about critical race theory, the race relations situation. Yes, there's always going to be bigots. There's always going to be people that don't like you for one reason or another. Some people don't like redheads. Some people love redheads. Some people don't like albinos. Some people don't like people with warts on their face. Does that mean we have to make laws against them? No. That means we call out people who are acting stupid when they're acting stupid. But what's going on right now is people are taking advantage of, and I mean black people and white people, in the upper echelons of society. That means the rich black and white people. We live in a time right now where if any of the white racists of the 50s and 60s were alive, they would kill over dead by how many black people are running things in this country. Everywhere you turn, there's black people running things. If it was a crime, they were, they, if it was a crime for... Mm, 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 mm. What I'm trying to say is we live in that time that Martin Luther King saw. But you've got people out there who are perverting God's word and perverting <coughs> and sort of carrying on. It's almost like it's like you've paid up a bill. It's like you've been owing on a bill and you've been paying on it every month, every month, every month. Finally, it's paid off. But the car company that owns your note says, oh, no, it's not paid off. You still got to keep paying. That's what's going on with the race baiting and, and those who are trying to stir up racial issues right now. There are no real race issues right now. The white people, black people, Mexicans, brown, in America, we're all under the understanding that America is a place where people live under ideals. Every other country is based on race. Every other country is based on race. except for America and the new uh, Israel, Israel that was created in the 1940s. 
they they were based on uh, belief system, right? And America is sort of based on a belief system also. And to be American means to have bought into and to believe in that belief system, which is based on God and believing in the teachings of Jesus Christ. Now, I know there's those of you out there that's going to say, oh, no, 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 no. There's a whole study on debunking Howard Zinn. So if you're going to bring up Howard Zinn or Patrice Coulors, who are known socialists, I don't want to hear it. Uh, what we have at this point is a bunch of fakers, a bunch of... It's funny because their main tactic is to call their enemy what they are. It is to say their enemy is doing what they're actually doing. And I'm not talking about the average voter. The average American voter doesn't know none of this. The average Democrat voter doesn't know none of this. They just want freedom like the average Republican voter. But the ones we put up there in charge who aren't serving we the people anymore, but they're serving uh, fear. Some of them are serving power. Others are serving fear. Others wanted to do the right thing, but have been blackmailed into not doing the right thing or have been extorted into not doing the right thing. It's a thing about the carrot and the stick. But the Lord says I need to go on with, with the reading. So, uh, okay, so he said, But you asked me to lead you away from temptation, so I gave you my Holy Spirit. He will guide you in everything, and you have the mind of Christ, and you know all things if you are prepared to believe the answer I show you. So set ego aside for a minute. Set your own personal beliefs aside for a minute. And if the Holy Spirit is in you, and if you've truly been uh, born again, and have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and ask the Holy Spirit to come into you, He will tell you whether you want to hear whether you want to hear it or not. He'll tell you. Now it's up to you to decide to believe Him, but He will tell you. And ask him, is Donald Trump God's chosen one to be ruler of the United States at this point in time? Uh, did Donald Trump win the 2020 election? Was the 2020 election stolen? And through the mind of Christ, which is in you, through the Holy Spirit, who knows all things, he will tell you. Don't take my word for it. Listen to the Holy Spirit. He will tell you. So God continues, the Lord continues on. For too long, since the one you called Lyndon Johnson, you have let money, 501c3 status, get in the way of preaching my message. Why do you stay locked up in a building that is meant as a meeting place to prepare you to minister to others? Then you go home and seem to forget everything you learned there. And what he's Sidebar again, this is me talking. Uh, what the Lord shared with me is he's talking about he doesn't want people to go congregate in church and just stay there. It, that would be like, he's giving me an example. I don't even like football, but he's giving me a football example. And he's saying that would be like having a pep, treating church as a, uh, 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 a locker how do I say it it would be like at a football team the football game before the game is in the locker room getting the pep talk from the coach but then they never go out to play they just spend the whole hour or two getting the pep talk that's what you treat church like today the Lord says he says you're not even going out to play the game and yes, it's true that, this is me talking again. Yes, it's true that uh, 
you know, within the, the spheres of influence, the seven mountains, as some call them, you know, we can make, we can influence, uh, God will put us in places to influence things in a, in a Christian way, uh, in media, in art, in education, in, in the church, uh, in our work life, etc. right? But that's not what he's talking about right now. He's talking about, there's plenty of people who file into church, who've been going to church for 30 or more years, who ain't never gone out and gone door to door and try spreading the message. He said, look at what the, I was talking to my, uh, my old pastor the other day, who I still respect, even though we don't agree on everything. And uh, he was saying, look at what the uh, Jehovah's Witnesses do. You know, they go out, they knock on somebody's door, they talk to them a little bit, and they say, hey, can I come back again next week and talk to you again? And they basically build a relationship that shows that they care, or at least appear to care, about this person who they're trying to convert. If you just say something to somebody one time, how is that? That's not going to convert anybody. How do you show love but through building a relationship, through investing time? You pay time into relationships, and that's what shows another person that you're actually committed to the success or goal or whatever of, of what that relationship is. In this case, convertees, people you're trying to convert, you are not showing your confidence, I guess. Mm, I don't know, that could be taken different ways. All right, let's go back to the word. The point is, God wants people to get up off their butt and stop going to church as church being the end all. Church is the is the pep talk before you go out. You should go to church. The Holy Spirit put it on my heart to say something like this. It makes me feel like you should only be in church for about on on Sunday, let's say, the day that we have off work, that we all gather together uh, to hear the word of the Lord. You should be talking to the Lord all the time. You should have three or four Bibles. Uh, you should have a Bible in the bathroom. You should have a Bible in your bedroom. You should have a Bible with you in the car. You should never be without the Lord's Word. You should always be able to refer to it and point somebody else to it. You should also not be in church for any more than an hour at the most and preferably 15 to 30 minutes. A quick gathering together to praise the Lord with a couple songs, to go over some scripture as a team, and then go out as a team knocking on doors in neighborhoods, especially in the poor and the downtrodden areas, the areas with children, and the Holy Spirit's moving through me right now, and he's saying the areas with children and orphans and uh, even those who've been um, adopted, not adopted, what's the word we're looking for? Uh, fostered, foster children, but who may be in a house with multiple children, and even though they have it better than they might have had it, they're still struggling because they got to share resources between all these other children, and they're not getting the word. Um, they need to get the word too. The parents need to get the word. So how many people are you robbing from the ability to learn about God by going and essentially uh, going to the pep rally but failing to go actually play the game? Let that sink in a little bit. The Lord is saying something powerful today. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. He says... Uh, so I'm going to read this again. For too long, since the one you called Lyndon Johnson, you have let money, 501c3 status, get in the way of preaching my message. Why do you stay locked up in a building that is meant as a meeting place to prepare you to minister to others? Then you go home 
and seem to forget everything you learned there. The scripture says we are kings and priests. We've been made kings and priests by Jesus shedding of his blood. And we've been washed clean in his blood. So as priests, we need to go teach the word to others. As kings, we need to rule. Um, we need to speak God's word and declare it uh, to the people. Um, I heard a pa uh, I heard a, a pastor, prophet, teacher, one of them, uh, Miles Monroe, black feller. I think he's actually originally from Haiti or or Jamaica or something like that. He got got an accent, but I love this teaching. He was talking about how we are ambassadors to the kingdom of God. I love that idea because ambassadors are respected they have sort of a sort of a advanced authority to get things done uh, when dealing with other nations so anyway he says i am seeking this is god again the lord i am seeking a remnant who will speak truth to government my people have been led astray on the purpose of give unto caesar and have used that as a basis to stay out of politics. You are playing it safe. No more. He's talking to the church now. He's talking to the body of Christ. Those who will not speak my truth directly to government will be cut away from the vine. Fear not, for I have not given you a spirit of fear, but the evil one has given you deceit and confusion. But if you are following in my will, I will strengthen you that no weapon aimed at you will hit its mark. All attacks will be deflected. Did I not strengthen Moses in front of Pharaoh? Did I not strengthen Elijah in front of Ahab? Did I not strengthen Samuel when time came for him to tell Saul to step down as leader of Israel? I am the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And have you not read, I change not? Then believest thou that I will strengthen you, and no strategy of the devil will succeed against you, and I will be faithful and do it, as I am not a man that I should lie. Stop hiding in your building on Sunday, and instead share my word, the gospel, by example and your actions. For you will not even need to say, I am a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, because the world will know you are my follower by your deeds and your words. Stand up, open your eyes, your ears, and your heart, and climb into my bosom and draw near to me as a child and know that I love you. Thus says the Lord God of hosts. Okay, and that's the end of the word. So, um, I'm going to take this moment now to, I guess, offer an, what's called an altar call. I, I'm new, I'm new in, uh, in Christ. I've only been uh, a real Christian, a real disciple of the Lord following his teachings uh, closely for about a year, maybe a year and a half. Um, so forgive me uh, if anything looks wrong or different than what you're experienced with, but I believe it's important, and I believe the Holy Spirit is convicting me to offer uh, anybody watching this right now who may not know Jesus Christ an opportunity to be saved uh, and start along the path of a lifetime of Christ-filled living. Lord, I ask you to guide me in these words also, that I may not lead anybody astray, and that I may lead them to you, who is the truth, the way, the truth, and the life. And you said no man comes, no one comes to the Father except through you. There are not multiple ways to heaven or multiple ways to God. 
as New Age and Coexist would try to have us believe, those are strong, clever deceptions of Satan, and we reject them wholeheartedly. So if you've never accepted Jesus Christ into your heart, I'm inviting you right now, anybody watching this, uh, say, just say sincerely to God, let's say, Lord, I repent of all my sins. I, I want to be a good person. I accept Jesus. Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. Come into my heart. Let the Holy Spirit dwell in me. And baptize me in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. For there is power, as it says in Ephesians 6, and that we should pray, as Paul said, in the Spirit in all things. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you've gotten something from this. I hope this has been powerful. Um, the Lord's done a couple things through me that are prophetic uh, but I'm, I'm still new I haven't done anything super super famous or amazing or anything and I don't need to as long as I know that I'm obeying what the Lord told me to do I'm in good I'm in good shape so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this off now and say thank you for joining me tonight again this was Eric uh, prophet of God and uh oh uh also just for any trolls or bad commenters comments that don't add anything useful to a conversation are going to be deleted i used to let i used to let them stand so that everybody else could see how stupid you were uh but now it just it takes too much time and it clogs everything up. So I'm just deleting them wholesale. So if you leave a decent comment with a with a question or an in-depth query, I'm happy to try to answer it. Uh, but if you're just wasting people's time, then your comment's going to get deleted. But thank you again for watching and please share this far and wide so that others can have the benefit benefit of this word of God, and God bless you. Amen.